Are you ever hacking away at CSS? You're trying to get something cool to work, but it's something that's a little bit complex and it just involves tons and tons of properties. It's one rule, like one selector there, one rule that you have set up with just like 30 properties going on. Everything's becoming a bit of a mess. It's just really hard to keep that organized because you're just trying to get it to work. You hear a lot about keeping your CSS organized as like your CSS file itself, but you hear very little about keeping organized within individual rules. And I think it's something that's a little bit underappreciated. I've heard of solutions like alphabetical, which to me drive me absolutely nuts. In this video, I'll look at what alphabetical is, why people like it, and what my approach is and why I like it better. <laughs> so let's go and dive in. All right, so let's say I'm working on this card here and it's just it took a lot to get to work, right? I have all of this going on and this is just a big mess. I have a whole bunch of conflicting uh, properties here. Like it, it's not good. So like, how do we keep this organized? As I said, some people like to do this alphabetical. So uh, I'm, you might be able to get a linter that can do this. Since I don't like alphabetical, I don't have one. Uh, I don't have, I don't know if you can or not. If anybody knows one, just leave a comment down below. If you think that is a good way to work, I don't mind. Everyone's entitled to their opinion. Um, but what you can do is if you do want to do it, you can just select everything and this is going to cause a problem, but uh, you can open up the command palette in VS code, which is shift control and P and then I can just write sort and then you have a choice of sort lines ascending or descending. Uh, interestingly, ascending is the one that starts at, you know, it puts it this way around. Um, so alphabetical. Uh, top to bottom. The only problem there is because these are on different lines, it breaks it, right? So what I'm actually going to do is that exact same thing. Let's select all that, but not my grid template areas. I can sort lines ascending, and then I can just grab my grid template areas. And in VS Code, I can do an alt and then push up or down on my keyboard, and I can get it to the right spot, which is right there. And now everything here is alphabetical. So one reason that people like alphabetical is because of this, where you can see when you have conflicting properties. And this can be a nightmare. If you have your display, like it's set up differently, the display grid's down here, you see flex stuff, you're trying to change the flex stuff and it's not working and you can't figure out why. And then a long time later, you finally realize there's a display grid lower down that's overriding it. We have a background color that's not changing and you can't figure out why it's a nightmare. So I get that. It's also like a very easy way just to say like, this is how our entire team is working. There's no thought that really goes into it. I'm assuming they must have linting that can do it. Um, and if not, you can do it the way I did where you can organize it that way. And then it becomes very easy to find issues like that. And the whole team can always have consistent CSS. So that would be the argument for it. My argument against it is if you have other things going on, like I, if I want to add a pseudo element down here, which, so I'm going to do a little bit of quick work on this uh, really fast and you're going to see one of the issues that I have with it. So I've added this like shadowy effect under here with a pseudo element. And one of the reasons I don't like alphabetical is let's say I took all of this and I do my sort. Um, what it's going to do is now I have my background, I have my bottom here, I have my content. Like uh, then I have like if I want to change my top left, bottom right, because I did a position absolute, well like then I have to go like height and then I'm sort of like singing the alphabet to like find my H and then I'm like right, A, B, R, and R is going to be close to the bottom. And then, okay, it's not this huge thing, it's not going to take that much thinking. But it's just the fact that like if I want to be playing, because usually if I'm playing with my right and my left, I'm doing all of those things at the same time. I don't want to have to be jumping all over the place in my CSS to do it. And again, you're probably not writing your CSS that way. It's getting formatted afterward. But if you come in to make a change, for me, this is a lot of cognitive load to find the properties that I'm looking for. And then especially if you need one change, it's not so bad. But as soon as you have to make multiple little changes to it, I find this drives me absolutely crazy. Kevin from the future here. Uh, so before we go into my method and why I like my method more, I do want to say uh, I started a conversation over on Twitter about this. A lot of people are really big advocates of the alphabetical one. And I don't want to make it sound like they're wrong by any means through this video. I'm just explaining how I like to do it and why I don't like the alphabetical. But it seems to be the bigger the team and the more people that are involved in the CSS, it does become a very common way and popular way to do it. So what I've done is I've linked to the Twitter thread down below if you want to investigate it at all. And I've also put a link to an article that dives into the benefits of the alphabetical order, uh, just in case you want to get that side of the argument. Now with that out of the way, let's go and jump into how I like to do it. So I did take a bit of a, a purposeful approach to how I organize this. 
And what I try and do first is uh, the content's a little bit different because this is a pseudo element. Um, so usually the first thing I like to do, and I guess content could fall into this, but um, I usually like having my display stuff first. So display stuff. Now I don't actually have any display stuff to worry about here. So we'll look at more of that in a second. Um, so after my display stuff, I like having my positioning stuff. So positioning stuff would be all of these things here right up to there. So this could also, if I had a Z index on there, let's just say I had a Z index of five or a negative one or whatever it is, um, that all gets included. And that way I can always do this, right? I have my position first, my top, my left, my bottom, my right, whichever ones I need. And then I have my Z index at the end of that. And then I go to my next grouping of content. Uh, my next grouping of content, I like doing box model stuff. Uh, which would include your background because for me background padding they're so related I do include my background in there um, as well as width your height um, if you have borders uh, you could put border radius in there if you wanted to that's optional I like doing that in a different category um, but height your your height your width your borders your padding your margins all of those types of things all get put into your box model stuff uh, and again because I find that background colors are so related to that I put it there now I don't have any here, but let's just do my typography, uh, which I usually would have. Then after that, I'm gonna have my manipulation stuff, which are things like transforms, filters, opacity, things that I'm like modifying what it looks, I'm moving it, I'm putting a blur on it, other stuff like that. And then I'll have my, at the very end, my miscellaneous. The miscellaneous could be things like border radius, uh, box shadows, just something that doesn't really fit into the other categories that you have there. And for me, this takes a lot of the cognitive load off of things. And I don't put comments throughout. I wouldn't do that. I just like generally organizing it that way. So if we look at the same thing for this grouping here, so I find this actually has the same benefit of doing it alphabetical. So if I have my display stuff first, I would have my all of this display things that are here, they would all get grouped up in that display stuff area right here. So even if my display grid ends up being uh, down here. So I have my display flex, then some flex stuff. And this is why I call it display stuff because it's not just my display property, it's things that are related to that as well. Um, so I would see right away that I have this conflict here and then I could go through and delete the one that I don't need anymore. So because I am grouping them logically by what I'm expecting them to do, you still have that advantage of being able to find repeated things and you can get rid of it uh, if you need to. Um, so my display stuff, then I have my positioning, positioning, which I don't think I have anything. Oh, uh, I'll bring this one up. This is an exception that I, I, I will make where my position relative, if I only have a position relative because I have a position absolute somewhere, I often have it as my last line just because I throw it in there. But if we wanted to be consistent, we could throw that there. Then we have my uh, box box model, right? So then I have my background. Now here I am, everybody I guess could have their own thing on how they like to organize it. I'm actually gonna move all of this up. Um, and then my text align can come down. So uh, even within these areas, I like keeping them a bit more organized, like a width and a max width. I usually have width first, then a max width, then I'll do my margins, and then I'll do my paddings, and then I'll have my background. Uh, that's just how I tend to work. And again, this is a, a, more, a more complex one. Like a lot of the time you don't have this much stuff declared on one um, one rule that you have, but it's all there. Then I would have my uh, typography type, I'll just put for now, where I have two things. I have my color and my text align center. And then after that, we don't have um, any transforms, but I do have my miscellaneous stuff that fits in. And another thing is, again, I'm not gonna be commenting all of this, and I don't always leave all the spacing, but there's nothing stopping you from in your CSS having these extra spacings to group it. So here's one group, here's another thing that's doing that, here's all of this that's doing my box model stuff, here's my typography, and here's my miscellaneous stuff down at the bottom. And I don't have to like, I can see these groupings really easily, I can get to them very quickly, very easily. If I have two margins, I'm gonna see them because they're very close to one another. I won't run into these problems by having this approach. Now, one issue with this is I don't think there's a way to lint to this. So I understand on big teams where you're trying to work fast, you have a lot of people that are in the CSS, linting can save the day and it just does it alphabetically. Uh, but I do think if you implement something, you have some documentation for your team to organize things in a specific way, it can really, really help out. And it just, for me, really reduces the cognitive load of how you can get around and do these things and find what you want and work in a way that makes a lot of sense. 
If I'm working really fast, I don't always have the time. I don't always organize it perfectly. But a lot of this is how I'm thinking as I'm writing my CSS. If I'm working on my padding, I'm probably thinking margins and I'm probably putting a background there anyway. If I'm doing my type stuff, I'm probably doing a lot of the typography at the same time. I might realize that I forgot something later, so I just have to go back to my other type properties to put it in there. It's not that hard to do. So I'd love your thoughts on this. You can leave a comment down below on that. And also, if you want to know how I did this blurry effect, I actually did that as part of a cool neon button recently. So you can check that video out for your viewing pleasure right here. And with that, a really big thank you to both Zach and Randy who are my supporters of awesome over on patreon as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support and of course until next time don't forget to make your corner on the internet just a little bit more awesome